Hello, in this video I'm going to continue my discussion of acidic cleavage of ethers, uh, focusing on predicting the products from such an acidic cleavage. Uh, and here I've got two different uh, ethers that we can talk about. Start first, uh, the cyclohexyl propyl ether or propoxycyclohexane reacting with excess hydrogen iodide. And um, one way that you can think about what the products, what products might form is to actually, you know, if you're so inclined to do so, go ahead and, and start drawing out uh, a mechanism. And, and think about, you know, how, what, what might happen. So if you remember that Ethers undergo acidic cleavage first by proton transfer at the, you know, ether oxygen, uh, followed by either an SN1 or an SN2 reaction. And for more substituted uh, hydrocarbon groups, we're more likely to see the SN2 uh, pathway go on. One, two, three. <clears throat> and so after the, the first step, proton transfer protonated uh, ether, loss of leaving group or fragmentation to produce the uh, carbocation and the alcohol. Now we have the iodide anion that can act as a nucleophile. back here at the react here generate the iodide and then a, a likewise thing is going to happen to the alcohol uh, and, in, and in the previous video I've, and previous uh, video I've drawn the, the mechanism for this uh, I'm just going to draw out the product The alcohol reacts further with hydrogen iodide through another substitution reaction. Uh, and so if you're comfortable thinking about it from a mechanistic standpoint, go right ahead. Uh, another approach, though, is to, to just look. Uh, this has, has some degree of, uh, of success. To just look at the two hydrocarbon groups that are on either side of the ether and the product of the acidic cleavage is just going to be breaking it apart and replacing the carbon oxygen bonds with carbon iodide bonds or carbon bromine bonds or whatever uh, whatever the acid may be make a little space here in my second example, now I have isopropoxy benzene. And if you do my other approach, you might very well start off by drawing bromobenzene and two bromopropane. Uh, there's a problem with this in that bromobenzene does not form in this reaction. Uh, in fact, you know the benzene side doesn't form doesn't react at all and only and and it it comes out of the reaction uh, as phenol. You might be like, well wait a minute. This, this sort of violates everything that we just talked about. Well, yes and, and no. So again, let's actually just briefly look at this from the mechanis mechanism standpoint, and you will be able to see, or, or hopefully I can convince you of what's a little bit different here. On arrows. Wait, I want you. There we go proton transfer to activate 
the first leaving group. Now we've got positive charge on the ether oxygen because I have a secondary uh, group on one side. I can just pot have the uh, carbon oxygen bond break. We're going to get a carbocation and we're going to get phenol from one, from the, the left hand side of the molecule. And we're going to get the isopropyl carbocation and we're going to have our bromide anion and these two things are going to get together and make the new carbon bromine bond. I do not like that. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right now as for phenol Phenol has no further reaction under these uh, circumstances. In, in the previous, in a previous video, uh, I described that you're not likely to get sp or SN2 reactions at sp2 hybridized carbons. We're also not likely to get SN1 reactions at these positions because. Uh, the hybridization does not support the carbocation. Uh, and so there's just no reaction that occurs. And so, because this uh, phenol can not undergo further substitution reactions, it is just retained as the other product of this reaction. So I just wanted you to be aware that when you have uh, an ether and one side of it is a phenyl or other aromatic group, and you react it with hydrogen halide, you are going to get phenol, uh, the aromatic alcohol, which is unreactive under these circumstances. And you're going to get the, the other side of the ether as the corresponding alkyl halide. In the last and final video in this sequence, I'm going to talk about some other ways that cleave ethers, uh, especially ones that avoid uh, strong concentrated acids. Thank you for watching.